हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल आई आई टी एन स्कॉलर सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट डुएल नेचर ऑफ रेडिएशन एंड मैटर सो एट फर्स्ट वी हैव टू नो व्हाट इज रेडिएशन एंड व्हाट इज मैटर सो रेडिएशन इज द एमिशन ऑफ एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वेव और पार्टिकल थ्रू थ्रू द मीडियम मीडियम और वैक्यूम स्पेस वॉट एवर सो दिस इज द रेडिएशन एंड and uh, we know that there is a lot of radiation electromagnetic radiation thermal radiation so these are the radiation and what is the matter so matter is uh, anything that have mass i mean that has it has a it have a volume so this is the matter so um, the main, what is the constitution of this matter so um, uh, to know about these thing we have to come into the other part so at first we have to So at first we uh, have to know about the um, X-ray and the electron, and um, who discover all um, X-ray and the electron. So now, um, what is the X-ray, and uh, who discover it? So now I am um, discuss about the this part. So what is the X-ray? So the um, the X-ray was discovered by Rontgen in. 1895 so after that after a long time um, uh, so the x ray x ray was discovered by ronje in 1895 and the discovery of the electron um, um, and the electron is discovered by um, british scientist j j thomson in 1897 so um, and these two things electron and the x ray are the very important uh, milestone uh, in the understanding of atomic structure so to explain the atomic structure of a material these things are very important and uh, the um, next uh, the british british physicist j j thomson um, uh, first determined the experimentally the speed of the speed um, speed and the specific charge of the electron and by uh, by calculating the um, uh, calculating by calculating the charge to mass ratio So E by m ratio, and he observed that this E by m ratio is uh, around around 1.6 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg. He calculated experimentally, and um, at the same time, in 1887, it was found that when some material is exposed by um, uh, ultraviolet light, it emit negatively charged um, particle having same speed, and um, E by m ratio is also same in in this in that case also. so uh, during that time the um, uh, scientist j j thomson think about uh, the um, this particle and during that uh, during that time in 1897 after 10 years uh, the british scientist j j thomson named this particle as a electron and and suggested that these particles are very fundamental and uh, this particle are the universal constituent of matter and uh, due to his experimental and the theoretical explanation of this particle he is awarded nobel prize in 1906 awarded nobel prize in physics so this is the brief history about the electron and the x ray uh, x ray uh, x ray discovered discovery and uh, now i am coming to the picture what is the what is the electron emission so um, it is a very common phenomena that uh, when the um, it is very common phenomena that the metal um, all the metals for metal have a, a huge number of free electron and as they have the huge number of free electron due to that nature uh, due to that thing the um, the uh, ma- uh, the metals are very good conductor of uh, electricity and the heat so mainly the for the electrical conductivity the free electron um, have a good um, uh, and um, and uh, nah, the the free electron all we know that the metals are the very good conductor of he, uh, heat and electricity and, and the main responsible for the, the uh, this property is the free electron so however the free electron cannot uh, escape uh, out from the metal so and uh, uh, it is normally so but some metal have the property the electrons are um, ejecting from the metal surface 
just by um, by light, uh, just uh, by the exciting those metal by light energy. So now I am coming to the picture and uh, those parameters which are the um, which determine which material is um, emit the um, electron or not. Uh, this property was determined by the work function of the material and the um, and the light um, and the um, uh, frequency of the incident light. I mean energy of the incident light. So let uh, now I am coming to the picture. What is the work function? So work function is the minimum energy required by an electron to escape from the metal surface. So um, this is the work function. So work function means I mean the um, how much energy required to escape electron from the metal surface. This is the work function of a material of a material. And this is the intrinsic property of the material. I mean this for for each and every metal this uh, this value is different and. Uh, those materials have very uh, low value of work function. Those materials are the generally the um, so the photoelectric effect. Now I am uh, coming to the picture. The um, what are the method, but um, what are the process um, to emit the electron from the metal surface? Hmm. So there are the mainly three kind of process to emit the electron from the metal surface. These three processes are the thermionic emission and on, uh, another one the field emission. And another one the photo electron em photoelectric emission. So what is the field uh, thermionic emission? So from the from this name, um, um, we can suggest that the by heating of a um, metal, we can emit the electron from the surface. Next I come into the field emission. What is the field? Field mean is it is electric field. Nothing but it is electric field. So um, we can uh, we can extract electron from the metal surface just by very high electric field. This electric field is around 10 to the power 8 volt per meter. This is the value of the very high electric field. And, um, and the, what is the photo uh, uh, photoelectric emission? So what is the photoelectron? Photoelectron emission is that so when you incident uh, when uh, when the high energy um, high energy light incident on the metal surface, and then the electrons from are uh, emitted from the from the metal surface, and this is uh, this is the and these electrons are called the called the photoelectron. So um, this is the very important property. So in later on, I will discuss uh, the full um, the photoelectric effect uh, and the experimental study of the photoelectric effect. So let's see. Now I am come um, come to that part. So what is the photoelectric effect? The phenomena of uh, of photoelectric emission was discovered by by Henry Henry Charles. In 1887, uh, during his electromagnetic wave experiment, and uh, and he um, later on the experimental study of photoelectric effects is um, demonstrated by scientists. And uh, now I am coming to the photoelectric um, photoelectric study study of photoelectric effect, uh, experimental study of the photoelectric effect. And um, so uh, in in this experimental setup, what 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 is um, for scientists or what did the scientist? Let's see. So this is the this is the experimental um, setup of photoelectric effect. So in photoelectric effect, what happened when the uh, light source from from a light source is fall on the photosensitive material. So, what is photosensitive material? Photosensitive is a material. Those material possess very um, low work function, and if um, the light incident on those material, those materials are emit electron. So, they, those materials are called photo photosensitive material. So, what is the photosensitive material? And um, it was found that the certain material uh, like uh, zinc, cadmium, magnesium. These materials are responsible only to the ultraviolet region, um, region uh, for the electron emission. So, what is the reason behind that? So, why the um, UV light can only emit this uh, ele electron from these materials? So, the main reason behind that, the, from if we all look into the electromagnetic spectrum range, then we observe that the um, UV light have very low. Um, Low wavelength means um, I mean shorter wavelength means it have a high frequency uh, means it is it is higher energy wavelength light so um, that's why the um, it can emit the electron from these and uh, these material these materials uh, these metals and uh, in the, on the other hand uh, some uh, materials like um, 
like some alkaline alkali metals such as lithium, sodium, potassium, cesium, and rubidium, where the sensitive event to the visible light. So these material, these materials are called photosensitive material, and uh, all these materials are uh, photos uh, photosensitive substances and can emit electron uh, when we uh, illuminate by light. And uh, um, these electron, uh, these electron um, uh, uh, were termed as photoelectron, uh, and this phenomena is called the photoelectric phenomena effect. So uh, this is the um, a, this is a uh, is is a is a whole co uh, evacuated glass tube. So the inside um, this tube, the vacuum is um, extracted. It means um, gas is extracted. So uh, it created va create vacuum at first. Um, and uh, the red one is the incident uh, photo uh, uh, photons. I mean, this is the electromagnetic waves. Waves. This is visible light. Um, and um, this is the C is the cathode, and A is the anode. So when the incident light hit on the um, cathode, I mean C. So during that time, uh, as this cathode is made of photosensitive material, so um, from that part the electron are the um, um, emitted and uh, as the the potential of the a anode is kept in positive potential via battery so these electrons are um, emitted from the c and um, go to the um, cathode a and uh, as the electron flow from c to a and um, as it completes the circuit so we can observe current in in this circuit due to the due to the incident light and where the potential difference between the A and C is measured by measured by voltmeter, and the current value is uh, um, in in this exponent is around micrometer range. Uh, so and uh, the photo current, the value of the photo current can be tuned by um, by tuning the um, voltage of this um, um, between these two plate plates means uh, between the C and A. So. Um, uh, um, now we have discussed the different effect um, on the um, uh, on this experimental setup. I mean the intensity of the radiation. Then I will come into the frequency of the incident radiation. Then the potential difference between the plate A and C, and the nature of the material of the plate C. So I will discuss on that that part later. So now I will discuss um, about the effect of intensity of light on photo current. So from this curve, we are observing that the, as the intensity of the incident photon um, is increased, so the um, the photo current is gradually also increases. So from this part, uh, we um, we can clearly um, means um, we can say uh, say that uh, <coughs> that the number of uh, photo electron emitted per second is directly proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation. So I mean, if the intensity of the incident radiation is high, so number uh, the photo current will be also high. Let's see now. I am coming to the picture um, effect of the potential on the photo current. <laughs> at first, we um, kept the um, kept a plate A at some positive um, accelerating potential with respect to the plate C and illuminated with uh, the C plate um, with a light of fixed light intensity nu and frequency um, frequency nu and intensity i1 so what happened at first we observed it as the um, for a particular frequency and intensity as you increase the potential so uh, the photo current is gradually increases and at a certain point the um, value of this current is saturated so i mean uh, this is uh, the saturation value when maximum current is observed so uh, after uh, if we uh, increase the value of the potential the photo current will be um, photo current is same um, photo current is the same. So um, uh, next, um, what we did, we increased the intensity of the light, and during in that case, we observed that the um, stopping potential is same, uh, uh, same. So now, what is stopping potential? So the uh, stopping potential is the potential um, of the uh, a plate um, is uh, and stopping potential is the negative potential. So um, uh, at which value the photo current become um, zero. I mean the negative potential um, uh, of the A plate at which the photo current becomes zero. So the stopping potential in this case um, at that point. So and uh, um, we we from this uh, uh, the graph we observe that the for different different intensity the stopping potential is same. But um, uh, and um, 
mm, is the same. So if the intensity will increase of the incident light, then the, um, then the, the current of the photocurrent is increases um, at, at, a, um, at a certain amount. And in case of intensity I3, we clearly observing that the um, photocurrent is gradually um, is increased little bit. And, um, and the uh, maximum value of the photocurrent is called the saturation current. So we observe that in, as the intensity of the um, light is increasing, increasing, the saturation current is increasing. So from that part we conclude uh, this. And the maximum um, energy of a electron, um, maximum kinetic energy, So the most energetic um, photoelectron um, having maximum kinetic energy e, e into V0, where V0 is the stopping potential. So um, uh, this is the maximum kinetic energy of an electron in photoelectric effect. So from this part, we can conclude that, uh, that for a given frequency of incident, uh, incident radiation, radiation and the stopping potential is independent of its intensity so from that part we can conclude uh, from this part uh, we um, <coughs> discuss the effect of frequency of incident radiation on stopping potential so from this part uh, the incident um, in, uh, frequency is different means uh, new 3 new 2 and uh, new 1 so observing this, uh, as the incident um, light have different intensity, so those um, light have higher intensity, I mean new 3, so has higher storing potential. So more energy is required um, to stop the um, electron, flow of electron from cathode, um, from C to the uh, anode, cathode to anode. And, um, but uh, however, we observe that the saturation current of in the three, um, three different frequency is the same. <laughs> same, it is clearly observing. And, um, And this implies that and the greater frequency of the incident light, greater is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron. So, so from this graph, we conclude that. If we, if we plot the graph between the frequency of incident radiation and the corresponding stopping potential for different metal, we get a straight line for different metal. So for metal A and metal B. So, and from this part, so from this graph, uh, we can observe that the stopping potential V0 varies linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation for a given photosensitive material. So for a given photosensitive material, the, the stopping potential varies linearly with the incident frequency. So if the increase is gradually, in, in, if the incident frequency increases, then the stopping potential is also increases. And there exists a, a next point, and there exists a certain um, minimum cutoff frequency nu zero for which the stopping potential is zero so um, um, at certain frequency cutoff frequency mean nu zero the for which the stopping uh, stopping potential will be zero and the maximum kinetic energy of a photo um, photo electron varies linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation but the independent of its intensity and another point is for a frequency nu of incident radiation lower than the cutoff frequency in new zero, no photoelectric emission is possible even if the intensity is large. So the intensity is a very um, means I mean the um, frequency is a very important parameter for a photoelectric effect. Now later on I will discuss the photoelectric effect and the wave theory. So in, in this theory I am discuss the energy of the um, how the energy of a photon is calculated and um, uh, Einstein um, photoelectric equation and energy of um, quantum radiation I will discuss. Now I am going to discuss about the Einstein. Now I am going to discuss about the Einstein equation. Mm, uh, so, uh, what is the energy of a single photon? If if a photon mm, with frequency nu, we all know that energy equal to E equal to h nu. H is the Planck constant, and nu is the frequency of the incident photon. So, if the photon frequency is um, higher, so the energy will be high and um, and then the and the I a maximum and, uh, and this and uh, 
so uh, so we can discuss about the the maximum kinetic energy of a electron um, ejecting from a metal which have the um, work function phi naught uh, so if a material having a um, work function phi naught then the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electron um, is e max equal to h nu minus phi naught nu is the frequency of the incident photon and um, from this two equation two we can um, an equation and from this two equation two the Emax cannot be negative. So, um, I mean that the value, um, energy of the electron, um, of the ejected electron cannot be negative. So, uh, and the, uh, so this part implies that, means uh, H nu is greater than equal to phi naught. So, H, um, so nu is greater than equal to um, nu naught. So, I mean, and um, photoelectric effect is happening only if the incident photon energy have a energy greater than nu naught in the threshold energy, in threshold frequency. So, and the threshold frequency is nothing but is equal to just phi naught by h cut. I mean, the phi naught is the, is the work function of the material uh, divided by Planck constant of the material. So, for of a material, um, for a um, for a material, we can calculate that um, calculate the, this frequency of a material phi naught by h cut. And the equation three can be written in uh, equation two can be written in um, in terms of equation three. Uh, means uh, I mean if if the maximum kinetic energy of the electron um, uh, in a um, electric field um, may be not is uh, equal to e, e equal to e v not. So v not equal to h by e uh, nu minus phi by e. So this is the equation three. And um, this is an important result. It predicts that uh, the um, V naught versus V cup is a straight line with slope h by e, and independent of the of the nature of the material, independent is independent of the nature of the material. So, um, uh, here I am discussing um, the particle nature of light, the photon. And the photoelectric effect uh, give an evidence to the straight fact that the light is an uh, light light in, in light in interaction with matter behave as if it is made of quanta or packets of energy, each of energy h nu. So the interaction of radiation with matter and the radiation behave as if it is made up and particle called photons. So uh, this is the these are the these are the five points we can summarize uh, and the photon mm, picture of an electromagnetic radiation radiation and uh, these are the the interaction of radiation with matter and radiation behave as it uh, if it is made of particles uh, called photons and each photon energy e equal to h nu and momentum p equal to h nu by c and the c is the speed of the light all the photons of light of a particular frequency nu is momentum p equal to h nu by c h by lambda the photons are electrically neutral are not deflected by the any electrical magnetic field as the electric uh, fields and uh, for, um, for deflection in the electric field or magnetic field a particle have to be must be positive like electron deflect in a magnetic field due to its negative nature so in the photon electron collision means um, um, such a photon electron collision the total energy and total momentum are conjugate this is the this are the um, this is the summarized part of the photon picture of an electromagnetic radiation. Now I am coming to the picture. What is the, the wave nature of matter? So, um, I mean the dual nature, the wave particle nature of light. So, dual nature means the particle and the um, light shows the particle nature also and the, and the wave nature also. So, the wave nature of light uh, shows up the phenomena like um, interference, diffraction and the polarization. On the other hand, the photoelectric effect and the counter effect are the particle nature, um, behavior of the um, particle nature. I mean, um, I mean, they, uh, in 1924, the French physicist uh, Louis de Broglie uh, given hypothesis um, given hypothesis with that and the moving pa moving particles of matter should display wave-like property under suitable condition and um, he reasoned that the nature uh, was a symmetrical and that uh, the two basically um, basic physical uh, entity matter and the energy 
so the divoglie uh, uh, hypothesis uh, it proposed that or uh, it can be called divoglie hypothesis that uh, the oval, uh, if a particle uh, having uh, momentum p and um, so uh, i mean uh, it can be uh, he proposed that the wavelength lambda associated with a particle of momentum p is lambda equal to h by p equal to h means h is the h by p means, means h by p equal to mv m equal to mass of the particle and v is the velocity velocity of the particle so uh, where m is the mass of the particle v is the velocity of the particle is known as the d um, and the, this relation this relation is this relation uh, relation four is known as the um, divoglie relation and the wavelength lambda of a material um, wave is called the divoglie wavelength and this wavelength lambda is called the is called divoglie wavelength and and the dual aspect of the matter is evident is evident uh, attribute of the um, wave while on the right uh, on the right hand side the moment of p is the type of attributed to the particle nature means the from this equation the both the nature is um, attributed from the left hand side is the uh, lambda is the um, is the wave nature property and on the other hand the um, momentum is the particle nature property uh, so um, for a photon we can p equal to for a photon with energy h the p equal to momentum equal to h nu by c this is the momentum of a photon relation 5 and uh, therefore h by p equal to c by nu equal to lambda equation 6 so for a photon the h by p equal to lambda means um, that is the de Broglie wavelength of a photon so from de Broglie relationship we can calculate the um, wavelength of a moving particle i mean so um, so why we cannot see the wavelength uh, of a or the radiation of a um, of a cricket ball having mass um, 0.12 kg and it's move with velocity its velocity is 20 meter per second so let's see calculated here so the momentum of the ball uh, cricket ball is um, or any kind of um, mass with having mass uh, 0.12 kg is mv equal to mass into volume equal to 2.4 kg meter per second square so um, second and the uh, um, and the uh, uh, we know the value of plan constant h equal to 6.63 10 to the power minus 30, uh, 34 unit and uh, uh, we calculated the mass uh, we calculated the momentum p equal to 2.4 so we observe that the value is 2.76 10 to the power minus 34 meter so this um, value of wavelength is uh, so small that it is beyond any measurement so we cannot observe any kind of motion any kind of um, wavelength uh, uh, this is the main reason um, why the microscopic object in our daily life uh, do not show wave like property uh, so um, this is the this is the main reason behind that so now going to the um, calculate the wavelength of a electron um, is accelerated through a potential v let's see the kinetic energy k equal to k equal to e into v e is the electronic charge and v is the potential um, via which the electron pass through so now k equal to kinetic energy k equal to half of m v square so v equal to means i mean p square by 2m so p equal to root over 2m into k k equal to ev so root over 2m into ev that part so now i will come into the picture the debugly wavelength for that electron lambda equal to h by p i mean 
एच वाई रूट अंडार टू एम इन टू भी सो दिस इज द रिलेशन सो दिस इज द रिलेशन फर ए the wavelength of the electron and if we substitute all this value i mean the electron mass of the electron is constant and charge of the electron is constant and h is the planck constant so we can calculate that value lambda equal to 1.227 root under v nanometer so uh, so where v is the magnitude of the accelerating potential so this this uh, this will be the wavelength of a electron if it passed through a potential V. So one of the important principle is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And the web matter picture elegantly incorporated the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And according to this principle, it is not possible to measure both the position and the momentum of an electron or of, uh, of a particle at the same time exactly. So um, this uncertainty principle can tell us the about the um, about the measurement of the um, of the of the position and the um, momentum at the same time. So and this um, if um, if um, there is always in some uncertainty delta x uh, in the specific position and the some uncertainty delta p in the specific momentum. So the product of the delta x and delta p is the order of h cut. I mean in Planck constant. And this is the um, this is the Mm. This is the uncertainty principle. So, um, and the above equation, uh, eleven point um, uh, above equation, equation eight, above equation eight, um, so um, equation eight shows that if delta x measurement of delta is equal to zero, then delta p equal to h cut by 0 i mean infinity so um, the, uh, the um, if de, if delta x is uh, 0 then p must be an infinity in order in order that the product uh, must be non zero so similarly if p is 0 then delta x must be infinity so ordinarily we can um, tell that the both the equation delta x and delta p are non zero such that the product must be is the order of h cut so this is the eigen principle I mean, and more accurately, we can tell delta x into delta p, delta p equal to h cut by 2, more accurately, so this part, so this is the Heisenberg principle, so and, so thank you everyone for watching um, this video, and I will, next time I will, other, um, I will upload further videos on physics. Thank you everyone.